Welcome back, everybody. Jeremy, here at My Way MFG. Working on our Model T replica again today. Ever since we left off last time, when we did the video on the fender, it's been on my mind how the steering's all gonna work out. I thought I would just come out here and work for a few hours this morning, see if I can just loosely mock something up, just so I got a general idea of what I need to do. That steering box, when you go to prop it up in there, doesn't have any flat spots on it. So it's hard to even hold it in place and get an idea. So I'm going to just do a little welding here and see if I can get it kind of tacked in there and see if I can get a few things working here. Cut a piece of C-channel out of that car frame, six and a half inches long. I'm going to tack it in there and put the steering box on it and if it's not where I want it, I'll move it and try to get it where something might work. Got that piece of seed channel welded onto the frame right here. We'll see if we can get a plate on there for the steering box. I ended up cutting the steering column off. I was wanting to use it all in one piece, but it was putting me at such an angle that my pitman arm on my steering box was almost up and down instead of flat. And I was getting worried about bump stare and stuff like that. And I might be overthinking it. It might've worked like that. I mean, we're not gonna be going very fast in this, but I thought if I could get my pitman arm laying flatter, it, it'd probably be better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a couple of U-joints in this steering column is what I'm thinking at the moment. Uh, where I cut this off, I ended up having to weld a, oh, it's got a bronze bushing in it with a carrier. It's a, it's a bearing for the side of a belt drive blower on a furnace. I had a, I had a new pack of them. This is what they look like. That's three quarter inch. So I just welded that onto the end of the column and the shaft went through it so that looks like that and uh we got this so it you know spins real nice there's not any play in it i put the original 47 mount back on there and just welded it in then i made a plate down here to uh cover my hole i'm be beating a piece of round rod around there i gotta get a chisel in here and hit it from this side and get that to lay down and then i'll finish welding around it and all this is just mounted to wood and i'm hoping that's going to be strong enough i'm probably going to have to make some something in here as well i don't know maybe just plate around this again like i did on the inside or i might actually have to put a brace from this over to the frame or something I just, I want that pretty strong. There's a lot of force on that, you know. But uh, anyway, the next step I think on this, remember me saying that it wouldn't stare? Well, the reason why, these heim joints here, if you get them pulled up tight to the, to the, uh, to the arm, the steering arm, it wedges them into the to the wishbone when that's pulled up tight it's rubbing so hard here it won't steer i've got them loose right now and i got it to where i can steer it when i've got the front end jacked up but i'm going to pop all this off of there i got some tie rod ends i'm going to try to weld back in here and see if i can get that to clear right here and uh Get them off, we'll go from there. All right, I got this tie rod in, welded into the end of this pipe. Burned in there pretty good. This shouldn't break. Uh, I'm gonna put this right in the middle of the threads on both sides so I've got the same amount of adjustment each direction. When we put the other one on, that ought to give us, you know, a couple inches of adjustment anyway. So I'm going to get these wheels straightened up to where they look straight to me. 
and then take a measurement between the spindle holes and finish making that up. Got under there with a tape measure and I measured to the inside tread on both front tires across the back and I had 52 inches. Then I measured from the inside tread to the inside tread across the front and I had 50. So I had 52 in the back and 50 in the front. So I moved it into 51. That got my, that got my wheels straight. And then I measured between the two holes where the, where the spindle, the tie rods mount into the spindles. And it was 49 inches from center to center, approximately. So I've got that laid out now at 49 inches from tie rod end to tie rod end. I'm getting ready to cut that pipe and then get this side welded in. And I'm not, I don't have to be real critical at the moment because I got about three inches of adjustment on each side. So as long as I'm in the ballpark, I'm going to, I'm going to be fine with that. Doing this steering has been a little more difficult because with everything else, I've been able to walk over to that scrap pile and rob something off a furnace or a water heater. With the steering, there's nothing in that scrap pile that's going to help me. So... I'm still trying to work with what I got here. <clears throat> I am going to have to buy a couple steering knuckles. I'm not going to be able to find them anywhere. And uh, I think when I'm ordering uh, steering knuckles, I'm going to see if I can find front wheel bearings also. And then I ought to be able to just have this front end all buttoned up and, and done and ready. Except for maybe front brakes. But otherwise done. So anyway... I'm going to keep going here, and uh, I'm hoping with these tie rod ends on here, it's going to give me enough room I can clear the bottom of them wishbones. I think they will. Anyway, we'll see what happens here in just a minute. All right, that's what that looks like. Let's try to get her on there. I got the tie rod in place, and it's not hitting on the wishbones anymore. I thought about taking a reamer and reaming them holes out a little bit so they'd suck up in there further. I don't know, it feels pretty tight. Might not even be necessary. If so, maybe just a little bit. Uh, got this steering box mocked up for the first go around here. My pitman arm is ahead of my tie rod. I think I'm gonna move this, this piece of channel back about three inches then I might just put a little bit more tilt on it. I want the pitman arm to be, you know, as flat as possible, but I, I think I will roll it up a little bit, just so my steering angle will work better when I go to put my U-joints on. So I think this is gonna come back and roll down just a hair, and that ought to put my, that ought to put my uh, drag link, you know, pretty straight with my tie rod, I'm thinking. But, uh. I'm going to pick my tools up here and go in for tonight. But yeah, we're getting there. Glad I got everything picked up earlier. Pretty good storm rolled in. I had a lot of tools laying out there. Anyway. Still working on mocking up the steering. I was getting ready to get on uh, Amazon. I heard a couple guys on YouTube say the jungle site. I didn't understand what that meant. I finally get it, Amazon, jungle. So now I can say jungle site, know what I'm talking about. It took me a while, but I finally got it. If I had a dollar for every time I didn't know what was going on, I'd be like, where's all this money coming from? Anyway, I was getting ready to get on Amazon, the jungle site and order a couple of U-joint uh, e knuckles for my steering shaft because I realize I'm going to need them if I ever want it to steer. I was at my friend Troy's yesterday. He lives quite a ways from here, maybe 45 miles. While I was down there, uh, I got talking to him. He had this. It's got two U-joints on it, extendable shaft. This come out of a Dodge Dakota. And uh, the gas pedal in my 59 Chevy Apache, 
That's out of a Dodge Dakota. I really like it. I've never had a problem with it. So maybe their steering shafts are good too. But anyway, I think I can cut this up, do a little welding on it and probably get this in here. I wanna to try to do that before I finish this video. But uh, anyway, the reason I was at Troy's to begin with, I got something else I wanna show you. The reason I was at Troy's was this right here. He'd been following along with the YouTube channel and realized I was trying to get this Model T to run and drive. He said, hey, I think I got a motor for you that might work. So I uh, asked him what he wanted for it. He said, why don't you just take it home with you and see if you can get it running first and then we'll work something out. He said, it's gonna be cheap. I'll tell you that, it'll be cheap, he said. So anyway, I went down to get it. He's had it for about a year. He said he's never tried to start it, but he had it in a storage container. And when he picked it up, he carried it out of a garage. So it appears it's always been inside. It's real nice looking condition. This is an Onan motor. I'd heard of them before, but I had never really thought about them or I've never owned one. This is a big cast iron twin cylinder. Opposed cylinders are 180 degrees. From what I've read, they run incredibly smooth. They're, they're thought of as one of the smoothest motors made. And one piston's always absorbing the shock from the other, you know. It's a way spark system. Both plugs fire at the same time. One's always firing on an exhaust stroke while the other's on power stroke. So there should be one set of points. I'm assuming right under here on this box, I'll show you in a minute, probably runs on a push rod. I'm thinking I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, these are big cast iron motors. They're heavy. It's got an inch and an eighth crankshaft. I did find an inch and an eighth 40 series Comet clutch pulley that will go on there. Comet clutch, uh, uh, yeah, whatever you call them, torque clutch. Um, it's got electric start. It's got a fuel pump so we can put the gas tank wherever we like. I think probably what I'll do first is just, uh, get a battery hooked up to the starter and the coil, spray a little carburetor cleaner in there and see if I can hear it pop off. As long as it's popping off, we'll put a little gas to it and see if it will run. If not, we might have to clean the points or look at other things, you know. But this ought to work really well on there. And my idea at the moment is getting this mounted in the back, 40, 44 series Comet clutch going between this and a Muncie three-speed transmission. I want reverse. It'd be nice to have the gears, even though the torque cut clutch provides you with, with gearing in itself, it'd still be good to have three-speed. And then get it hooked to a big sheep pulley on a rear wheel. I'm only gonna have one wheel drive, but this wouldn't make a good off-road vehicle anyway. I don't have a lot of ground clearance. So I'm thinking one-wheel drive will be just fine for the street, you know. And then uh, maybe just front brakes. I'll get some backing plates on them front axles and try to find some 11-inch brakes off of something that I can get centered up and fit back on there. I think that ought to make us just a pretty good, reliable around town vehicle. I do want it reliable. I don't want to be pushing it or breaking down, but um, anyway, yeah, we're gonna see what this behemoth will do. So I'm assuming the points are probably behind here, running off a push rod up on the cam. I would think the cam is right in here somewhere. So it's probably the points under there. It's a big cast iron intake manifold that goes across to both sides. Uh, 180 degrees opposed cylinder, inch and an eighth crankshaft. It does have a fuel pump on it. There's something wired in between the coil positive and the coil lead wire. I'm not sure what that is. I, I thought maybe a low oil cutoff switch. I'm not sure. 
but anyway it's wider and wired in series with the coil i don't know a whole lot about these this one here i ran the serial number on it it was built in april of 1960. so this motor is a 1960. these Onan motors were uh, originally built and sold on generators the company made generators and they made their own motors and these were on the generators starting back in the 40s and later on they started selling motors individually for tractor companies and stuff i think maybe wheel horse or bolin or some of them might have used some on their tractors portable welders stuff like that if you ever watch the tv show mash and Hawkeye and BJ are working on somebody there in the operating room and the lights start to flicker and Radar has to go back and work on the generator. This is what Radar would have been working on. He'd have been back there filing the points and hitting it with a hammer. And these were these were made to be very serviceable. There, it's an industrial motor. It's just kind of, you start it up and you just let it run for 3,000 hours. You know, it's got, it's got rod bearings in it like an automobile. Uh, this one runs at 2,700 RPM, 12.9 horsepower. Um, they, they were just made to be a very serviceable industrial motor, made to be rebuilt many, many times. It's got a, it's got a mark on here. There's the crank rotation. This mark here for top dead center, it lines up with a mark. I don't know if you can see it back there. See the other top center mark. So, you know, they're made to be figured out. That's good, right? This one appears to be in really nice shape. We just got to make sure it runs and everything and hopefully doesn't make any noises. The only bad thing I've heard about these is once in a while a valve seat might come loose and you'll hear some tapping going on in there. Other than that, I've really not heard anything bad about them. I don't know if that's a starter only or a starter generator. I'm assuming it's probably a starter generator. Uh, no, it is not because the gear disengages. So that would be a starter only. So you'd have to run an alternator on it if you wanted to charge your battery. There's that... Uh, there's that switch or whatever it is. It's wired in series with the coil. It's got like a rubber cap over it. It's the coil, coil wire goes to the coil and then to the battery. I'm not sure what that is. We'll figure it out if we need to. But uh, anyway, that's what we got here, guys. And we'll probably just try to fire that off a little carb cleaner and then maybe do a video later of it actually running. So another pretty good find, right? I got my steering shaft and a possible engine to use. So I'm happy with all of that. Anyway, I'm gonna get back and do a little more welding on this and see if we can get that somewhat working. All right, guys, I got them E-joints mopped up on there. Uh, the steering box location's where it's gotta be. So I went ahead and I welded this one in all the way around on three sides to the frame. So far, I've got this plate welded on two sides. I've still got to weld down through here. My steering box is setting a little more of an angle than what I wanted, but that's where it's got to be in order to make the U-joints to work. If I go any flatter with it, they're going to bind up. So I don't have a lot of room there. I've got a short nose on this thing, you know. But when I had the Ford steering box in there with the uh, with the straight steering shaft made into it. My pitman arm was, I'm not gonna say it was vertical, but it was more vertical than horizontal. And I was gonna have a lot of arc in it. You know, I didn't know how that was gonna work out. So I've just been watching this one. And if I take this piece of straight metal here and I lay it flat, I'm clear over right now turning right. If I put this down, it just touches the top of my tie rod. Just touches the top of it. So then 
if we turn it straight, and I put this down, it just touches the top of it. If we go clear over to the left, and I put this down, pretty much right at the top. So I don't think I've got a lot of, of a vertical arc there. I think, I think that's gonna work really good. Uh, so right now, none of this is welded yet. I got enough friction on it though that it, it will roll it. So the next problem is I don't have two more tie rod ends to get over there into that hole. And even if I did, that hole is lined up almost directly with the wishbone. It doesn't look like I could go above it or under it very good. I'm not sure how that was supposed to go originally. I've got the heim joints here. They're in good shape and they've got grease certs on them. I think I'm gonna use them for the drag link. And these are the two pieces left over from the front spring cross member. I've just drilled a hole in this one. I'm gonna do the same to this one. And uh, I've got it to where this half inch bolt will go through. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these here and here and have two of them. And then I'm gonna weld them right into the tie rod and then put the heim join in and then up to the steering box. And uh, we're just gonna see if it works, you know? Gotta start somewhere. In my mind, it works. So those will get welded right in there somewhere. So I'm gonna keep going here and see where we get. Got an eighth inch hole drilled in this one. I just traced it off of that one been going eighth inch and then about quarter inch I think that next one's like seven sixteenths then I've been using that reamer to get it out to where the bolt fits nicely so I'm gonna keep going here with this until we get a bigger hole here that's what that looks like all right guys I just got this welded up enough to where I can where I can start to steer it a little bit Watch this. Watch what happens when I steer. Watch the fenders in relationship to the cross member down there. Can you see it? Anyway, the whole thing is shifting back and forth on the shackles. So I guess that pan hard bar is gonna be a necessity it's just gonna it's gonna move the whole frame when you steer but uh let me get a jack under the front axle and just see how it works otherwise it's got full range in both directions it feels pretty good only problem i'm seeing is uh I need, i'm gonna need a pan hard bar watch down there at that shackle
That's what that looks like from the front. The pan hard bar, or not the pan hard bar, the drag link, it's not parallel with the tie rod. So there might be a little bit of bump stare going on there, but I don't think it's gonna matter a whole hell of a lot with this. We got full range of movement. Everything seems tight. I don't see anything binding up or flexing to the point that it looks like it could break. Uh, that post over there, right there, was made for that pan hard bar. I guess I'm gonna have to put one on it. But uh, I think that's pretty well mocked up. Pretty well done. I just gotta finish the welding, I believe. Well, guys, I feel like that probably is successful. I, uh, I turned it with full weight on it with the front wheels on the ground and cranked it both directions. And that wooden fly or wooden firewall wasn't really flexing. So that might be strong enough. We'll, uh, we'll keep watching it and make sure if it looks like we need braces somewhere or something, we'll put them on. But uh, I think we got full range of movement. Everything feels good. So I'm gonna call that a success. I think that's just about done. I suppose on the next time around, we'll maybe see if this engine will start. That'd be good to know, you know. But uh, anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, all those things. We'll catch you on the next one. Later. Jeremy.